what I expected, but it really wasn't this. Amazing, isn't it? I was surprised when I first came here, too. It's... There aren't any windows or skylights in here, but it's still so light. The ruins are made of stone with a high ragnite concentration. It lights itself. It's uncanny. Look at this. Something's written on the wall here. It's an Old Northern script. Old Northern? It was the dominant writing system in Europa. You still see it on a lot of old monuments. Do you know how to read it, Faldio? Yeah, we just covered it this last year. Let's take a look. It's more or less a recounting of the Darkson Calamity as the history books tell it. The Darksons unlocked some secret property of Ragnite and tried to conquer the continent. A hundred cities raised its fell light, ten hundred thousand men and beast therewith. It says this area used to be one of the cities lost in that purge as well. So they did use Ragnite. It was in the middle of that destruction that the Valkyrer suddenly came into the picture. Supposedly they rose to face the Darksons, armed with sacred lances, blue with flame. That became the War of the Valkyrer. I had a picture book about that as a girl. But it's fiction, right? Like a fairy tale. Ruins like these dot the European map, traces of the culture that once ruled the continent. The majority of the anthropological community now agrees that the Valkyrer did exist. Wow, this is so educational. The Valkyrer won and rose to power, while the Darksons were scattered across Europa. There are some who worship the Valkyrer as the saviors of Europa, even today. Meanwhile, the Darksons got branded with a stigma of their past and were persecuted. With no land of their own, they had to work as itinerant laborers and ragnite miners. Which is why there are so many Darksons still working in the industrial sector today. Anyway, that's enough history for today. Let's keep checking for Imperial tracks. 